So this little video is going to talk about finite differences and increasing and decreasing parts of the graph. Also, um, usually this is introduced in grade 12 and we talk about it in terms of increasing and decreasing intervals for the function. So let's take a look at the ones that you would have been given in your homework, starting with a linear function. So if we take a look at the, the line y equals x, it looks like this, right? This is basic stuff. Minus two, minus two, minus one, minus one, zero, zero, one, one, two, two. You graph it, you put arrows on the end of it. Um, the domain is X is an element of real numbers. The range is X is, Y is an element of real numbers because you can plug in any value for X and obviously get an answer for Y. Now, is it an increasing or decreasing function? So increasing functions, increasing means that as you go from left to right, and this is by convention, so as I go from here, or x is minus 3, I'm at 3, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, so it's going up by 1, and you should know that because the slope of the line is 1. So as we go from left to right, the function increases. Remember to read the graph from left to right. Don't start going this way and say, oh, but it goes down here. No, as you come this way, you're reading the graph this way, it's increasing. So this function is increasing for all values of x. So for x is an element of real numbers. It's increasing all the time. What are the finite differences for this? Well, the finite differences, some people get this all mixed up because you were told to subtract the y's and you may make the mistake of subtracting them the wrong way. Basically what it means is that if y, when I go from x is minus two to minus one, what happened to the function here? Well, I added one, I went up one. See, minus two to minus one, that's up one. Or easier, and this is where the subtracting comes in, you take this last number and subtract it. So two minus one is one. One minus zero is one. Zero minus minus one is one. And minus one minus minus two is one. And all the differences are already one. So that means it's linear. When they're all the same, you stop. Okay, so that's how you find the first differences. And you can only do first differences with this one because we've already reached the constant value, which is one, which means this function had a slope of one. If we go on to the quadratic now, y equals x squared, the domain, x is an element of real numbers. You know that because you can plug in any value for x and get an answer for y. Now the range is a little different for this graph because I have to look at where it starts and where it goes. So in this case, y is greater than or equal to zero, y is an element of real numbers. So if we go to the finite differences here, if I went from minus two to minus one, you see I've gone down by three. So this would be minus three. Or, like I said, you could start with the last numbers in your table and subtract them. So four minus one is three. One minus zero is one. Zero minus one is minus one. So I look at them and this is, of course, the first differences. They're not the same. And they're not supposed to be, right? Because it's quadratic. Quadratics mean the second differences will be the same. So let's try again. So if I went from 3 minus 1, I get 2. 1 minus minus 1, I get 2. Minus 1 minus minus 3, I also get 2. So now I can stop. These are my second differences are the same. And that means that it is a quadratic. <coughs> now intervals of increase and decrease, I look at the function. As I read it from left to right, remember I'm reading this way, the function is going down until this point here, where it's neither going up nor down, and then past that it's going up. So it's decreasing, decreasing for x is less than zero. All the values less than zero, as I move from left to right here, they're all coming down. So it's decreasing in this interval at zero is neither increasing nor decreasing. So decreasing for X is less than zero and it's increasing for X is greater than zero. See, as I go past here, it's going up. It's neither increasing nor decreasing here. 
check with your teacher. Some teachers don't understand this concept that it can't be doing either, but it's neither increasing or decreasing at zero. So I can't include the zero in my increasing and decreasing intervals. Moving on to absolute value, here's your graph. Remembering that as we go from one number to the other, the answer is always the positive, the absolute value, which is the absolute distance from the origin to minus two is two places. So in this function, I'm just trying to check, see what you needed to know. You need to know the domain and range. Well, the domain is x is an element of real numbers. I can plug in any value. And the range is going to be y is greater than or equal to zero. y is an element of real numbers. Because here, this is where it starts, right? At zero. So um, you don't do first and second differences on this. You can if you want. Two minus one is one. One minus zero is one. 0 minus 1 is minus 1, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and then if I subtract these, you see I'm not going to get anywhere. 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus minus 1 is 2, minus 1 minus minus 1 is 0. So there's no, that it's neither um, linear or quadratic, which we know it's not. It's an absolute value function. Okay, so what about increasing and decreasing? Well, the same as the quadratic it's decreasing for x less than zero. And don't look at this arrow. This is where people usually make a mistake. Say, oh, look, it's going up. No, it's not. Because you're reading this way. You're taking a look at your x values. So as I come up this way, the values here, see, are decreasing. Two to one. If I had minus three here, I'd say it went from three to two to one to zero. So that means it was decreasing. And now it's increasing. So it's decreasing for x is less than 0, and it's increasing for x greater than 0. It's not doing either when x is 0. Okay, hope this is helping you out with your little homework assignment. Okay, radical functions. When you graph a radical function, make sure you have a starting point and you have a nice smooth curve with an arrow pointing to the direction that you're going in. The domain x is an element of real numbers, but x can't be, look here, I can't take the square root of negative 1. Try it on your calculator. It'll blow up on you. No, you can't do that. We don't take the square root of negative numbers in the real number system. So we're going to say that the domain is x is an element of real numbers, x is greater than or equal to 0. I can take the square root of 0. The square root of 0 is 0. Here's my beautiful curve, looks like this. Um, the range, well, if you take a look at it, we're using y's, y's an element of real numbers, and y starts at zero and it's going to go up slowly, but it's going up all the way across. So if I took the square root of a really, really big number, like 100 million, I would get a really high number, right? So this is y is greater than or equal to zero, just like the x's. Here's my table of values. There's no significance to the uh, first or second differences on this. That only applies to functions with degree of 1, 2, 3, 4, that sort of thing. Linear, quadratic, cubic. Okay, so what about increasing intervals? Is this function increasing as I go from left to right? Absolutely. It's increasing. Increasing. 4x is greater than or equal to 0. It doesn't exist anywhere else, so it's increasing for all values of the domain. It's going up. Okay, so that's, uh, that's your radical function. A cubic function looks like this. This is also not part of the grade 11 curriculum, but it doesn't hurt you to know things a little more difficult. So just like with linear quadratic functions, the domain is real numbers. I can put in anything for x and get an answer for y. As you can see, I can put in the domain goes everywhere and the range also goes everywhere. So range is y is an element of real numbers. It goes everywhere. The first difference is here. Now remember we could start this way. We could say I went from minus 8 to minus 1. So that means I went up 7. Or you could start this way, go backwards. 8 minus 1 is 7. 
1 minus 0, this is probably easier, right? 1 minus 0 is 1, 0 minus minus 1 is 2. Minus 1 minus minus 8 is 7, so I have 7, 1, 2, 7. Well, that's not linear, obviously. Let's take a second difference. 7 minus 1 is 6, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, 2 minus 7 is minus 5. Still not a constant. 6 minus minus 1, 6 minus minus 1, that means I'm adding them, I get 7. And minus 1 minus minus 5 is 4. What's going on here? This isn't the second difference. Let's do this again. 8 minus 1 is 7. 1 minus 0 is 1. 0 minus 1. Oh, why did I say 2? 0 minus minus 1 is 1. And minus 1 minus minus 8 is 7. Okay, let's try that again. 7 minus 1 is 6. 1 minus 1 is 0. And 1 minus 7 is minus 6. There we go. Now 6 minus 0 is 6. And 0 minus minus 6 is 6. I knew that had to be true because that means that the third differences must be constant because it's cubic degree of 3. So x to the power of 3. That means cubic, right? If it was quartic, then my fourth differences would be the same. Okay. Now, where is this function increasing? It's increasing for all values of x because as I come from the left, remember, don't look at this arrow, just look at what's happening. We're going up everywhere. So it's increasing for x as an element of real numbers. All x's. Now you might use interval notation in grade 12. Um, I'm not going to introduce that here because it's not part of the grade 11 curriculum at all. Reciprocal function, 1 over x. Okay, so this one is probably one of the more difficult functions, but you should know how to graph it by now. If not, take a look at my parent function video. I'll put the link to that as well. Um, I did quite an extensive explanation on how to graph, um, how to graph a reciprocal function. Um, domain, let's do that in here, even though I've done it before. X is an element of real numbers. X is not equal to zero. Why? Well, because I can't divide by zero. One over zero doesn't exist. What is the range? Well, y is an element of real numbers. And this time, y is not equal to zero. Why not? Well, if you think about it, as I put in really, really large numbers here, one over 100 million is a very small number, but it never becomes zero. So that's why we have these two asymptotes for the function, uh, the reciprocal function. Okay, so uh, where is it increasing and decreasing? Take a look. I'm start here. Are my numbers going up or down? Obviously, they're going down. When I flip to the other side of the asymptote, am I going up or down? I'm going down. So it's de decreasing for all values of the domain. So you can write it like that, or you can say it's, it's decreasing for x is an element of real numbers, x is not equal to zero. In other words, for the domain of this function. And the very last one you had to do was the exponential function. And here's a graph of y equals 2 to the x. What is domain? Domain is real numbers. I can put in any value here and get an answer. So domain x is an element of real numbers. The range, there is an asymptote here. This is y is equal to 0. So the, the range means y has to be greater than 0. y is an element of real numbers. It's never 0. You can't do 2 to any number. This is the same thing as working with the reciprocal when you think about it. Because 2 to the negative 1 is a half. 2 to the negative 2 is a quarter. 2 to the negative 5 is 1 over 32, and so on. So it approaches this asymptote, but never crosses it. Nice curve, okay? Make sure you put arrows on the end of it. Identify the equation of your asymptote. Increasing or decreasing? Well, this function is increasing, because if you go from left to right, it's called exponential growth, right? It's growing this way. 
So as I go from left to right, and again, ignore the arrow. The arrow is just telling you where the function is going. But as you read from left to right, you can see that it's always increasing. Increasing for x is an element of real numbers. And that's your quick look at defining um, the, the increasing and decreasing intervals, quick sketches, and the domain and range of your basic parent type functions. There you go.